Our first topic is the uh, reporting, and in the reporting specifically, we concentrate on the advanced reporting because that is which is part of the integrations and the types of reports that you may, must have seen or maybe if not you have worked on like nbox or any kind of other reporting matrix reporting those are specifically falling into the reporting domain which is totally a separate topic wherein people do build the dashboard reportings and so on so out of one of those reports we'll be discussing is the advanced reports which is the core report for the integrations and integrations can only be <clears throat> using those reports whether it's a standalone or rest api using the custom report or it's uh, enterprise interface builder your eib outbound integrations or it is a studio integration so anything to everything if you want to have your report uh, used as an integration it could only be the advanced report and then we'll further discuss the uh, <clears throat> attributes of the advanced report which enables it to make as a web service so all those things we're going to discuss in there so before we jump on to the report, so the report, <coughs> before you create the report, what is the <coughs> basics of reporting that we're going to discuss even before the report is the finding the right source of data, just like in the legacy systems, we used to build the SQL queries, we used to query the tables, the RDBMS structure to get the data, what we know. So the SQL queries, we select star, where conditions, look clauses, all those things we used to build up. So Workday has a little different architecture wherein you are not exposed totally to the database and you are rather exposed to only the functionalities which Workday want you to view. So there is no clear picture of, although they are using some RDBMS concept, but there is still no clear picture what database they are being using. And we only have some modes of mediums to interact with Workday. Now Workday is also coming up with the language queries like WQL, Workday query language, they are coming up and they would now allow developers to write the WQL queries directly and maybe used in the extend applications. And <clears throat> so once Workday is now opening up a lot of things and they are kind of exposing their database now. So technical people, if they can write the queries directly, then no need to have this UI built up for the custom report wherein you are kind of exactly doing like a query, but still it's kind of taking time for you to create something in the UI, which might not be useful for an integration. So you can directly do that via a query. So all those things actually are coming up now with Workday. So <clears throat> more to come on that. So <clears throat> on the reporting side, th there is a there is a couple of uh, important concepts like data sources and the business objects. So data sources concepts in Workday for the reporting area is kind of having a table and a table is kind of having <clears throat> a data which is being open to query and now those tables could be different different tables which is storing so not exactly like a tabular concept what they has given so if you're able to relate to the previous legacy systems it's fine if not then just run it and understand it as a new concept so <clears throat> what has given some populations a fixed set of populations where you can say that this data source contains this and you will get this types of information from this data source and if you want something else, there are other data sources that you can query. So Workday has a definite set of population via the data sources, which they will tell you that this data source contains this information and you will be able to get the data out of this. Then comes the building of the reports using those data sources that, so data source is your first point of contact to create the report, which is the, <clears throat> which could be exclusive or which could be inclusive as well. So we usually, uh, kind of expect a more <clears throat> inclusive data source so that later on, if you want to include certain workers, they are not excluded from the data source itself. Just like if I talk about all active and terminated workers or all workers. So if you are having, one is having future hire, another is not having future hires. So in tomorrow in the landscape, if your requirement comes in and you want now to extend the same report or the integration to the future hires as well. so you might not be able to do this because the data source was something else. But in that case also, what they kind of allows you to change your data sources once it is created for the report until and unless they have the same primary business object being shared. So <clears throat> all in all, data source is something which decides your population, what population you are going to report on, what is the population from which you want to fetch the data. And what they kind of have pre-built data sources, which what they has given, and there are certain types of data sources that they have given, like the standard data sources and the index data sources. 
So index data sources are <coughs> recently available nowadays. Uh, it is from a performance perspective, the index data sources are created. So <coughs> it kind of used the feature of indexing just like we have books and so on. So there is an index. If you want to quickly go to a particular record on a particular page, you can go. So they are using the RDBMS concept for the indexing to search the data quickly so comparatively to a standard data source the index data source works more efficiently from a performance uh, perspective and <clears throat> so this difference can only be seen with the large data sets not like if you're querying 5000 workers and uh, you have just 10 or 12 fields in a report so you won't might feel you won't feel the difference of the indexed and non-indexed data source it, it could be that <clears throat> you'll feel the same way but when the population becomes so much big, when your execution time gets increased, when you have a lot of calculated fields, you have complexities in your filters and in your, your reporting, then those index data sources comes into picture and really saves you a lot of time. So that's why Workday has given the index and non-index data sources, but not every data sources alternate index is available. Sometimes you will have to manage with what Workday has given. So there is no alternate to every uh, standard data source some are having with an indexed version so it totally depends if your population criteria is satisfying that you can use that if not then you'll have to manage with the <clears throat> non-indexed data source that are standard data sources so there is a there is a report in workday to find the data sources what all data sources are available in workday which is the data sources report so when you query that report you will have the list of data sources and the details about the data source what is the data source what is the population description of the data source what are the business objects related to the data source so <clears throat> when we talk about data source business object always comes as a second uh, second point to discuss with the data sources because data source has <clears throat> a close coupling with your business object because your business object kinds of x as a reference parameter which gets with through which you kind of query your data source to get the data what you need so the attributes of let's say in terms of a worker you have a worker and you have attributes of worker like email hire date their compensation <clears throat> their personal their demographic data so these are stored in the data sources via these attributes which are created which we call as employee id or hire date or the, so via those fields this data is stored in the data sources but you cannot query that data source directly without having a business object defined for the data source. And every data source has one primary business object through which you kind of query that data source because the fields or the attributes of any particular object, let's say in case of worker, we are talking about a worker. So the attributes of a worker will be linked to the primary business object as its fields. And then the data for those fields, for those attributes will be stored in your database. So it's like a your primary business object considered as a door and your door has all those fields and attributes which are, which are <coughs> lying on that particular business object. And then the data for those fields are actually inside the room and we're calling the room as a data source. So you're querying the data with the help of a primary business object because your primary business object from a data source perspective can only be one but similarly just like there are business objects so there could be related business objects as well which are not primary to your data source but still they hold the data and that secondary business objects can also be used to query the data from the data source so in case of let's say worker is a primary business object there are other business objects like dependents when i talk about the worker so dependents is a related business object in terms of primary Dependent is also a business object on its own, but they only become primary and secondary when we talk about in terms of the data source. So if I just query some of the data sources here. of the data sources you see here there is a column mentioned in here as primary business object so every data source has a primary business object which is mentioned here and primary business object can only be one and then the data source has a description and description tells you in brief what is that data source going to contain 
what are the attributes what are the parameters of the data source just like the population inclusion or any prompts if the data source contains or not so all those things will be part of the description especially the population that what it is a data source going to contain in terms of the lever data in terms of the active uh, data in terms of the future <coughs> IRS data so your population decides and this should be the first point of uh, contact when you are going to build a report on your data source so you have, you have to decide whether the you can ex you can exclude something by applying the filters or something but if something is not included in the data source level itself then your filters will not going to help you then comes your data source type which is we discussed that it could be a standard one or it could be an indexed one so if you see the indexed all workers uh, as the name also suggests so not every data source has indexed in its name you can see by the type so <clears throat> And then you have category of the data source, what category it belongs to. Usually it tells what kind of data it is holding. Then you have some data source level filters. So if a data source has any built-in filters, then it is going through mostly the index data sources has some built-in filters with the data source itself that you can decide while creating the data source. There are some built-in prompts which are available via the data source. Those prompts help you <clears throat> to get your data quicker like it works as a filter and we'll also going to discuss the multiple type of prompts that can <clears throat> come in the life cycle of workday mm -hmm. so <clears throat> your primary business object is one in terms of your related uh, in terms of your data source and then you have secondary business object which is holding it so your secondary business object is like another table and when you have a foreign key in between querying two tables and there is some let's say the dependence we are calling it as another record and then prime the worker we are calling it as primary record so if you want some related information like dependence detail related information then that will not be holded with the worker business subject so if you need to get some data so there will be some foreign key which will be <coughs> connecting these two tables and that foreign key might be the worker that it is the worker id or the worker itself because worker is the a source of your main primary business object and also dependents are directly related to your worker so there should be something in common when you want to have related business objects so that is why workday gives you a report for the business object details which kinds of tells us that what are the relation between a particular business object and how many related business objects it has and what are the connections which are already built or <clears throat> but provided by a workday which says these are the relations which are being set up between a primary and the secondary business object and how do people relate to it and it works both ways if worker is the primary business object and dependence is a secondary business object there could be cases so on on their individual level or their own existence exist as a business object but when we talk about in terms of relativity when we talk about in terms of a particular data source when we talk about in terms of a particular report because your report can only have one primary business object so in that case we call them as primary because if there is something related to them as secondary then only they become primary a dependent can also behave as a primary business object when your report data itself uh, your report itself is built on a data source which is a dependent data source and accordingly that data source will have dependent as its primary business object so in that case if you want to report something on the worker then automatically your worker worker becomes the secondary business object so the relation between primary and secondary is only when it comes to the report otherwise all the business object stands as they are the just just business object since they just data source we are talking <clears throat> in terms of the data source we are talking so from a data source perspective only one primary business object can be there which is defined already on the data source level and you cannot change it so <clears throat> <clears throat> let's go to the business object details now the report to query your business object is just type business object details and business object details report is quite heavy and big so it kind of works only for one business object at a time let's say we want to query on the worker business object 
you can just enter the business object details. So this is kind of a built-in report by Workday, which has business object as prompt. It's going to take some time. Taking a little more time. Let's wait. Okay, almost there. So this is the report for your business object details, where you give your business object, and now you're on the business object details page. So the first tab you see here is for the fields. The second tab is for the related business object. The third is the data source to which this primary business object is linked. And then the reports where this business object is being used. To the fields column, all the fields which are lying on the worker business object. Now it could be the delivered fields which Workday has already given. It could be the calculated fields which are already created on your worker business object. All those fields which are directly tagged to your worker as a business object will be lying here. So roughly 5,532 fields in this particular tenant are being existing on this worker business object. Now it will contain all your delivered fields, calculated fields, etc. <clears throat> if you want to search some field you want to report on and you're really not sure, you're not the report field is not being shown up, showing up in your report or somewhere, and you're not sure. So this is the place where you are going to come and search for that particular field with different different names that you can see. So this report is going to tell you if that field exists here, that means that field is supported by the worker business object. And if it does not exist here, that means that field itself that you are looking for, it's not on this particular business object, it could be on the some other business object. So if I just want to search some of the fields that say where So I see my email related data, it's email primary home. So just like we have uh, indexed data sources, we also have indexed fields. So, so for some of the fields, Workday has given the indexed version of the fields also, which can be used if available. So some of the fields, if you are searching for, you can search that. So all these fields with the description of that what this field contain, a field source, whether that field is Workday delivered or it's a calculated field, the type of your field. So you already know Workday, so you already know that what are the data types that Workday supports, just like we have text fields, we have single instance field, we have multi instance fields, we have Boolean fields, we have date related field. <clears throat> so all these fields that Workday support, one of the type is field type is text. So this field, what is the type of this field? The built-in for the category that it, it is going to. So <clears throat> this tab is going to tell you the fields, whether it's a calculated field or this direct field is going to tell you how many fields are existed here. Then you go to the related business objects tab. Now this related business object tab becomes very important from a perspective where especially when you need to build the relation between the related business object, you want to query something out of a related business object in which you don't know how to query or maybe what is the relation already based between the primary and the secondary business object. So this is the place where you would come to check the existing relationships and what relationships Workday has already provided between this particular business object as primary. So if you see, there are two sections to it. One section says links to related business object and the other section says links from related business object. So the first section says links to, that means worker here is a primary business object behaving as the primary business object. And all these business objects, which you see here are actually secondary business object. It is secondary when I say just related business object. So the related business object where the worker is primary and all these business objects, 607 items that you see, are all the related business object. So that means Workday has given the relation between worker and these primary business, uh, these secondary business objects, where these are secondary and worker is primary. So there are, and these numbers that you see here, that means these many links or these many connections are built using this combination where worker is primary and one of these is related business object. And these numbers, if you see, they, they can represent a calculated field as well. So if I just click on somewhere, it will tell me how many relations are there and by, by what way these relations are there. So there could be some fields 
where my primary business object is worker, but the data is coming from a secondary business object, a related business object, and that related business object, this field, just like for this example. So <clears throat> we have a field called benefit annual rate instances or benefit annual rate instances by type, wherein the <clears throat> this business object is set up this field is set up with a relation wherein worker is a primary business object to this field and benefit annual rate is the secondary business object to this field so this is a connection similarly let's say if we have all the cal fields that we usually build so if i just open we'll say dependent business object which is easy to understand so you see from dependent there are 86 connections made. So if you are trying to build a calculated field and that calculated field data, data let's say, is lying on the dependent related business object. So you are querying something from related business. So all these queries wherein worker was a primary business object and there was a calculated field created to get something out of the related business object. So these are the number of 86 links which we have here. Now, most of it would be the calculated fields, some of them will be work day delivered fields. So <clears throat> these are the relations which are given here. You can also search and use this report to find any existing field which is already built up and you might uh, get a help or reference from this. Otherwise, it is also going to help us in a way that work day is related to dependent business objects. So if I want to carry something on the dependent business object, then I can. Anything which is already not mentioned from a worker to the related business object link. That means there is no relation given by workday and I cannot create a new relation here. If the relation is already set up in between these, at least one relation should be there. Then I can only link that particular business object as a related business object to work or to that particular business object which we are talking about. So this is links from worker to the related business object which a worker was primary and these were our related business object the other way around this report tells us where these business object are kind of behaving as primary business object now where these are behaving as primary business object the scenarios could be that maybe these are being referenced in a report where that report is not built on worker and that report might have been built on some other business object and some other data source and then they might have needed some worker related information. So in that case, they were primary and the worker business object was secondary. So all these business object here, they are working as primary business object. <clears throat> and our worker business object is kind of as a secondary business object. So if I just talk about this compensation grid field. So the business object this field is relying on is compensation grade and the field name is employees in compensation grade and the related business object to this is worker now this is a delivered field but since this data is related to employee and it is the employees compensation grade so they kind of created this this way that the related business information is coming from a worker somehow that's why they have related it to a related business object worker but the primary business object for this field actually is compensation grade so similarly, you have lots of um, fields like compensation plan or maybe a lot of calculated fields also, contingent worker related information. So this is the opposite to it where these are primary. So again, if you're building, you are, your report is built on one of these business objects and then you are trying to see if I can get some information out of worker, then you have to come here. So in, you have to come here and see that business object that you are building the report on and see if it has a relation to worker, in what means you are looking for the data from the worker's perspective. So see if there is a connection here already. If not, then you cannot create that link. So this report is very helpful in finding the relations and will help you build your calculated fields where one business object is not enough and you want to get some data out of the other business objects as well. These are the data sources where this worker or whatever business object you have opened here is related and all these data sources are using worker as its primary business object. So there are around roughly 63 items where you see here which are using worker as its primary business object and these are the so this is just kind of a data sources report it just that it is only for the worker business object which is there.
the category and your data source type standard or indexed then you have the reports wherein the reports which are created with worker as your primary business object so these are the reports in the system which are created using data sources which are which is uh, primary business object is worker <clears throat> any questions on the data sources and the business objects relationship one quick thing you can change the data sources um, provided uh, once you have created a report so it's possible to create the data sources it's not like that you have to change the report entirely you can change the data source but make sure that data source can only be changed when the primary business object of the next data source that you want to use is also the same so if your primary business object is same then you can change the data source and it is done because to preserve the fields or the calculated fields which were previously created on the primary business object and now if you use some certain data source which is which their primary business object is same then the fields that you have added already in the report will not be serving their purpose so which is why the primary business object needs to be same <clears throat> if you want to change the data source so that your existing fields continue to work <clears throat> same way <clears throat> You cannot change data source if their primary business object is not same. So it is allowed, but with certain limitations. That's the types. Now we quickly move to the report writer overview. In the report writer overview as i said already that we'll be focusing only on the advanced reports which is the main integration report and we'll uh, straight away go it has a reason as well because advanced reports can be enabled as web services so you will see that you must have already seen i think if not we'll see so advanced report can be enabled as web services so and then when you enable something as web service that means there is a structure involved in the back end when that report runs in and kind of gives you a structure could be a xml structure could be a json structure so that the other systems okay. which are calling that report as a rest or a web service can be able to but the you know the structure of the other reports like matrix or your inbox reports those structures are mostly created for a viewable purpose that means just you see here so what they support these kinds of reports using matrix and inbox because these are good for the viewing, but you cannot create a code out of them. The code will be that much complex that it will not be able to handle the integrations. So that's why Workday only supports the advanced reports to be used for the integrations. You can use to, if your task is not done by one report, you can use two reports in create two reports separately. And then maybe you can use studio integration to combine those two reports. If they have something in common, or then you can take use of those two reports but <clears throat> only advanced reports can be used in the integrations so <clears throat> now okay. when Correct. we move into the integration area your reporting comes especially your advanced report comes in as the first set of integration why we call it as integration so you will see uh, when you move to the integration area now and when you onboard with new vendors or when you maybe you work for implementation or if you work for a product uh, who is onboarding new vendors on a basis and then you kind of have to since workday is your source of truth for the demographic data and for the all compensation every data so if some other vendor is onboarded and they kind of need the access to worker data then their first preference would be to have used especially for the demographic data their first preference would be to use our ras api so when they call as RAS API report as a service, so RAS API is created using your report, which is your advanced report, which we create in Workday, which we call it as custom report as well. So when we can create the advanced report, this advanced report has a feature that it can be enabled as web service and then it can be exposed as an API. It can be, it can have a link, it can have a username, password. You can provide the authentication using OAuth 2.0 using the workday structural method so that 
that report that custom and report also behaves as a custom api because you can you you can create a data set what you want you can create fields you can create calculated fields you can create a structure of what the data is needed and not just the standalone delivered fields you can create calculations in using the ras report and then those custom fields the calculated fields can be showed up in your and then that data can be pulled by another system and so that is your first set of integration that you are going to create or you are going to suggest when you are going for a design session or when you are trying to onboard a new vendor or you are trying to build a new integration so that will be your first set of integration that will come to you when you are going to search for a new integration so that can be created by using a report and we'll learn how do we so report normal creation is as, as usual as you might have created the report the only thing that we are going to do different is that we are going to enable that report as a web service the rest of the things like your filters your sub filters your prompts and everything will work as is <clears throat> it's just that that report will now be enabled as web service and we'll discuss how the url of that report is generated how it is exposed to the outside world how those different different structures that work the supports so those are the things that we are going to discuss so let's Quickly, I think uh, my session is already going on. So I already have a report which I recently created. Don't want to have so many things. So let's say there is a report in here which I just created in this session. So it has this report has these fields. Let's say you have a demographic file that you need to send uh, that you need to give to a new vendor who is kind of uh, enabling the new employees to get access on a new different tool so they need their hire date they need their employee id their primary email work and full name cost center and their hire completion date so, and then we have a filter in the hire date so that we just want to we don't want to process the future hires and we probably want to just have a start hire date filter wherein we can provide that date and only people hired um, before that date or equal to that date should be processed so this is a report that i have created now if i <clears throat> normal things will remain same like your columns your sorting your filter any prompts that you have so i have created a filter by which i have enabled it as a prompt so that i want to give the user an access at the runtime so you understand the concept of prompts right yeah i do yes okay so <clears throat> we're using so a couple of ways there there are to generate the prompt one is from the data source that can be the built-in prompts second prompts can come from your filter third prompt can come from your sub filter and one another way that we're going to learn that your prompts can come from your field as well so these are the different different ways where you can generate the prompt so this prompt has come from your higher date filter where we have enabled our end user or an api so that they can pass this parameter at runtime and accordingly the output will be decided the rest of the things are basic your output type is tabular this is the help text that you generate this is the sharing options you can share the reports with others authorized users and then we'll have you ever dealt with the isus no yep so <clears throat> we'll discuss but i did not well. create isu but uh, using isu yes okay so we'll learn how to create the isu how do you link the security and all yeah so how do you transfer the ownership of a report from an isu so currently this report is being owned by this particular isu yeah. and uh, on the advanced tab you are going to enable your report as a web service so here you'll get an option where you enable this report as a web service so if you go in the edit mode there will be a checkbox to this report and you can enable so if you are just using your report in-house uh, in workday only maybe for scheduling or anything then you don't need to make it advanced and it is a good practice as well if you don't need your build to be <clears throat> if you don't need to share this report set outside via something or api and you're only using for in-house reporting dashboarding then you don't need to do this because unnecessary it will be captured in the reporting as well as as this is a web service report and the integration team also might not be able to identify if this report is really an integration or just an in-house report due to the ownership issues that reporting team is owning all the reports and then 
integration team is owning the enable as web service report which are rest apis so you enable this report as a web service and you report go to the advanced tab and you enable the web service as here by doing this checkbox so if i just uncheck it all these things will go away the web service version and all so if i just click it <clears throat> when you create the report you get the workday versions which are there so by default we choose the latest unless we we know there was something in the previous versions which is not supported and we still want to have the older versions used otherwise you usually go and choose the latest version of the web service api it usually goes with the workday versions which is currently going on <clears throat> then you have a field for namespace so namespace is something which uniquely identifies your <clears throat> report when this report goes to the outside world and acts as a, acts as a code of data then this namespace helps this <clears throat> report to uniquely build its identity and when this this report will be shared with its name as a namespace in the world of uh, integrations with this namespace so this by default the uh, format of the namespace for the report usually is this uh, this is default urn com workday report and then you have the report name so the namespace cannot have spaces in between so even if your report <clears throat> has some spaces in between when workday creates the namespace it automatically kind of adds the <clears throat> underscores to have the uh, in continuation format so this the first part before this was the default one you are in com workday report and then with a slash followed by the name of your report so it never has a space in between because when it ex when it is exposed as a code your code should not have any spaces it should have a continuous format so <clears throat> This is what your namespaces. We're going to learn more when we're going to generate the XML R structure and so on. So many things to this that how the namespace is useful in there. <laughs> now, in the report, you must have seen these two things. When you have column heading override, and the another option that you you would have only seen this if your report was web service enabled. So, if you have come across a report which in the system was web service enabled then this column gets enabled when your repos is a web service so these columns helps you identify so this column is just for in-house reporting when you are using your report inside and this column can have spaces in between but this column is ex exposed when the report is exposed as an api the data is exposed via these columns and not these so that's why if you have any spaces in between the names of these Workday will give you an error, will not allow you to save. So these fields should not have any spaces in between and try to have as, as short as names as possible for this because if your report is heavy and uh, you have too many fields as well, then the, the longer the name of these characters, the longer the time Workday is going to take because writing these tags against each worker and if you have 1000 workers, 10,000 lakhs of workers, then these tags will be written in the XML or the code for every worker. So the shorter the names of these, the more the performance of the report would be. So <clears throat> these fields are only exposed when your report is working as a web service. Otherwise, these fields will only show when you are running the report inside. Now, these are group column headings you might have already used. If you are using any data from your, from your related business object, then you have to define these group column headings here and this is important because when you have a report enabled as web service and you have some data coming from a related business object so to define the correct parent child relationship that what data is on what level so if my report is using worker as a primary business object so all these fields will lie on the same level because they are directly coming from the parent same these all will rely on the same level whether even if it's a calculated field but since it is directly built on worker business object they will lie on the same level but let's say i have another uh, i have data coming from another business object but so whenever i add another business object that business object kind of becomes a child level related business object and i need to define that business object here so that when the data any data coming from this business object can be treated as a child node and 
this node will be figured out by this related business object and then again you have a name to it so similar way if you define this it will be only for inside and this will be for the outside world so under this name a, a nesting would be created first and then under this so first you will have worker these 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 fields and secondly then you will have this one more nesting created and under this whatever the field that you are going to report on your related business object will be lying there so a worker can have more than one dependent so in this child your dependent will be structured one by one if they are multi-dependent or something like that so this is used to structure your xml or your code or data when whatever you are expecting you are exposing a json or xml or whatever this helps you to create the structure when you are exposing your report outside so i'll add it in some time and see you how it looks like so <clears throat> This is what your group column, group column heading is. I guess I have not made any changes to this report. I'll probably just cancel it. So now, <clears throat> how do you enable your report as a web service? When you have <clears throat> on the advanced tab, once you have enabled it as a web service, then you have created the report now let's say there is a requirement that you have done this report and now uh, the other party for which you have built this report or the vendor or the downstream system what information they would need from you they would need the url of this custom api the rest api that you have created using the report they would need the authentication details so the basic very basic authentication that gets applied to your report is using your username and password and of course you are not going to use your own username and password we are going to create a system user that is an integration system user account to this report which will be owning this report and which will be having the proper security of this report considering the data that you are going to send and only that security will be applied for which the data it, this report is containing and then you will assign the ownership of that isu and then a password will be generated for this isu so the very basic authentication that can be given depends on the company that you are working for or the client who is following what security protocols so the first way and the basic authentication that is needed is the username and password based so you need three things for that first you need the report url that we will see how do we generate it second thing that you need is the username and password so these are the three things that you would require for the basic authentication that you can provide and your end user or your downstream system can start getting the data now when you share <clears throat> when <clears throat> so this is something kind of a uh, not a push from workday but rather a pull from the downstream system so since it is a pull from the downstream system based on the frequency that they are pulling this data workday has no control over the schedules or something because it is actually not scheduled in workday so they can change the frequency of the input from workday at any time they want and the ownership of the uh, schedules and the running frequency will be maintained now at the downstream system and we will just be the owner of this report in this tenant and any changes which are required to be done any password related changes or they have forgotten the password or maybe you won't need to move from tenant to tenant from build to production so since when you move from tenant to tenant the url gets changed because url is only applicable for that particular tenant so you have to share the different url and we'll see how the url gets changed when you are going to see the report so how do you generate the url for the report which is used as a rest api so you go to the related actions you go to the very last and do web service and you click here view urls so any prompts if your report has those prompts will now be prompted here because your prompts will not get lost even if you are creating your report as a web service they will be uh, they will be preserved here and they will be part of the url as well because when you are because the <clears throat> downstream system or the vendor will not be actually coming into workday and entering these details they will be kind of interacting via an api and the api needs the parameters to be run so that they can send the same parameters they want and that can still be embedded as part of the api which will hit workday and accordingly they will get the data so let's say i have given this state 
okay <clears throat> so now i am on a page where i am being shown different different outputs which workday supports so the first thing when you are creating a report for your downstream system the first thing that they might need they may need or they might not need nowadays everyone is uh, flexible with the workday's architecture especially the rust api so they kind of do not ask for this which is the xsd structure so access what is the xsd structure XSD structure is actually kind of the data structure for your report. That means what are the fields which are being sent? What are the types of those fields? So that when they are creating a data structure at their end, they would know that what is the type of this field coming from what day? Is it a text field? Is it a string field? Is it a date field? So that the respective placeholders that they will be creating in their system to consume the similar data, they would know that what kind of field information they need to define at their end. So this is what that XSD structure is. It is a little bit technical in nature, but it more or less contains the <clears throat> data structure from the report that you have, the fields that the report has, and <clears throat> the different different types of uh, data structures that your field supports. Just like if you see here, the employee ID is a type of string, <clears throat> minimum occurs zero. So this, this is all the XML structure that is there, the type of fields that it has, the data, uh, data structure of those fields. So usually you just share this as is with the third party system and they would just straight away uh, ask you if they need it that kindly share the xsd structure of your rest api so this is how you generate it and this is how you you can just save it and create as a as a xml file and just share it <clears throat> so if you see here you have uh, if you carefully see this it has the namespace that we saw in the advanced tab here the namespace of your report and how it is generated xml ns that is xml namespace colon workday so this is how the namespace is generated in the code for your report and this is how this work, the report is uniquely identified in the core system as with the namespace so this is the existing structure and if somebody is requesting then this is how you uh, this is how you see it now you have different different output types that workday supports so the most used ones and the majority ones which are being used frequently is workday xml simple xml and json sometimes people do request csv as well and the most used ones out of these is the json because json is very light uh, language so the most preferred uh, approach people prefer is the json output from your report so we'll see a couple of ways how do we generate the different different uh, output from this the first could be the workday xml that we generate now workday xml and simple xml they both are xml but simple xml is so workday xml is little more descriptive and straightforward which kind of gives the workday reference ids as well in the data Normally, if you just generate the simple Excel, it will give you the employee ID, the name, date of birth, and so on. So just the straightforward uh, field tags and the value of those field tags in Workday. But Workday XML kind of gives for some of the fields, not for every field, especially the single instance and multi-instance field. Workday kind of gives a little bit more than needed information in the Workday XML when it generates. So it depends what if you are really looking for that kind of information, then you use the Workday XML. If you're not looking for that kind of information, if your vendor is not looking for that kit, and if they still want XML, then you can go with the simple XML. And if they just need, they straight away they need JSON, then you can go for the JSON as well. So let's quickly see, this report was actually creating some issues to me and I was not able to generate the XML into it, but uh, let's me see if I'm able to, there was a password issue I was facing. Actually, I don't this. So once you click on this, so your X, to generate the XSD structure, you don't need any credentials. But to generate the output, because your XSD structure does not contain your PII data, but your any of these XML, uh, any of these formats does contain with data. XSD does not have any data; it's just the structure. So Workday prompts you for the authentication whenever you click any of these. 
So that level of authentication you have to provide here. And the same thing that we were talking about the, uh, just now, that you need three things when you are going to generate an XML structure. And what are those three things? You need the URL and you need the username and password. And this is where the system is prompting you. So running this report from a URL means the same as you're running this system from the end system. So there are systems uh, that you can test it with, like Postman is there, REST API is there. So there are other systems where you can test this report if you have them. Otherwise, you can also test it as the same way. If you want to see that if, if this will, is going to work in their system, then you can simply use a browser. You hit the URL and we'll discuss how does this URL is formed. So if you see here, and the first very few things will be the basic structure of Workday, that is the HTTPS command. Then you have the Workday data center on which this tenant is lying. Then starts with your tenant naming configuration. If it is an Impel tenant, then Impel, then services one. If it is the production tenant, then the URL will start from myworkday.com. So accordingly, that's why we say whenever you change the tenant, let's say you migrate this report from this to sandbox, then sandbox to production. So every in every tenant, the link will be changed because this is going to change in every tenant. My workday, sandbox, or whatever is so. This is going to change in every tenant. That's why when you share the URL and you move from different different testing phases, you have to share the new URL from the new tenant. So <clears throat> until here, you will see the so this is going to change with the tenant, and then rest of the things will remain same until here. Then comes your tenant name. So here will be your tenant name. This tenant's name is iterate jms2. So this will be your tenant name embedded. And then from here comes the uh, owner of your report, who is the owner of your report. So owner of the report was this. So this was my owner of the, so if there is a space, uh, so since your URL has to be in continuous format, and if there is a space in your ISU or your owner of the report, then that space is by default filled by a percentile <coughs> as the HTTPS uh, command. So I had some spaces, so that space is filled by the percentile. So this is nothing but my uh, owner of my report or whatever the owner of your uh, report is. So until here will be my owner with spaces filled with percentile. Then comes my report name. So this is my report name here. And if also if your report also has any uh, spaces to it, then it will automatically be uh, named with the underscore. And then here is your report name so until here is your report name this is the owner then comes if your report has any prompts that's why i said if you have reproved any prompts your prompts will not be lost they will be part of the url because they still need to be used if they if at all any prompts are there so we had a prompt so how that prompt is added once your report name is confirmed after that there will be a question mark and after the question mark there will be the name of your prompt that is you had it and then the value of that prompt will be applied here. In our case, since we already applied via the UI, if they are generating via the uh, any system, then they'll have to pass the characters uh, in here with the date parameter that they are going to use. Now, <clears throat> the first thing that we generated was the workday XML. Now, workday XML is actually the default output from workday. So, since workday XML is default output from workday, we do not have anything after the prompt. But if we are going to generate any other format of this report output other than the workday XML, then this would be explicitly mentioned here like this with format and the, and the type of format, like if it is JSON. So you will see that after the prompt, explicitly the format will also be mentioned so that when they are passing from a third party they would need to know that what structure they are going to consume so if they want to consume the json structure then this is how they have to uh, query in workday so that they will be receiving a json structure so i'll just show you so if i go here this now we generated uh, this <clears throat> so let's generate the json let me first copy the URL and let's script it. You'll see here, I've just copied the JSON URL. 
So rest everything is same, 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 same with the high date. So after the high date, my end format is attached. End format is equals to JSON. Similarly, if I have format as simple XML, then it will be replaced with simple XML. So the URL that your system is requesting, you can just copy the URL. If you are requesting a JSON, just go here, copy URL. If they are requesting a CSV, go here, copy URL. If they are requesting so the output that they are requesting from you, it will accordingly go here. And these are the outputs which Workday supports. And you can just give them the URL. So the URL you will find here. The username that you have created for your ISU will be uh, already at, uh, created. We are also going, going to learn it in the security session. That how do we create the ISU? How do we create the ISGG for integration? How do we assign the domains and all those things? So these are the three things that you need to, to have your report enabled as a web service API. And then that API can be used in this system. And this is how you are going to test it as well. If this is working with the username and password in your browser, then 100% it is going to also run in their system. Whatever system they are using, they might have a pre-built connector with Workday and so on and so on. But if you want to test, one way is to test like this, or you can also test it with the other tools like Postman, and SOPY. So where you can just do a get call. So this is kind of a get call to Workday because you are getting some data to Workday. You are not updating some data into Workday. So it will be kind of a get call because these postman tools and all will want you to define the type of protocol that you are going to do. So HTTPS get you are going to that. So that's why it is a kind of a get call that you are going to do. And then this is the URL in your get call. And then you will also, um, the different tools have different, different sites. You will define the authorization with username and password and all those things. So. <clears throat> This is your first way of moving into the integration domain wherein you are building an integration with the REST API. The REST API has a lot of benefits. It's like you can customize it. Workday also can give this default information using a, a public web services SOAP API as well, just like get workers is an API. So that can also give this similar information, but that API is not configurable. They will have a default set of fields you cannot support the calculated fields in there so you need a calculated field and to build a simple a straightforward with use of calculated field functions you can create this report and can be used as a rest api so <clears throat> this is uh, also a very uh, lightweight language uh, with the json when you work this out and <clears throat> that is the uh, best approach nowadays the systems are following to consume this kind of data, especially if they have demographic data needs. But there comes with some uh, cons as well to this structure. If you have very complex report, if you have fields crossing the 50, 60 limit number and you have complex calculated fields as well, complex filters, then this thing will be kind of an issue for you wherein you will be <clears throat> stuck with a lot of performance issues, especially in the production tenant. And if you have not done the performance testing, so for a larger data sets, which has a larger population, complex filters, complex calc fees, the number of calc fees or some more, then this kind of approach should, would not work in those cases, because this is only for a quick uh, uh, data set, which is needed and not for a time consuming. So it can go well with the limited number of, among the resources and the fields and the filters and also on but not for a complex case because this itself will take a lot of time running in workday and then similar amount of time will be needed for the same amount of data being processed in the third party system. So the overall uh, reaction time gets increased using these. So everything comes with the pros and cons. So these are some of the pros and cons of your report being used as a REST API. Another thing is that we will not have any control over this since this will be a pull from their system and not a push from our system. So let's say if something goes wrong today and the today's run was failed or they said, okay, we did not receive this data in this call. So you will not have anything to go and validate because they might come to you after a couple of hours or maybe a next day or after two days and saying that, okay, the last day run was not proper and we did not receive. 
So you will not have anything substantial to validate because you cannot run this report back in the past that what would have happened at that moment of time when we ran that report. So one alternative to that is that uh, you can uh, you can find the schedule from in uh, schedule in their system. Let's say they are running this report twice a day or thrice a day, and these reports are used because this, these frequencies of this REST APIs are actually more uh, at least depends on the system. But uh, since these are uh, <clears throat> Uh, report as a REST API, they kind of want to make it as real time as possible. Sometimes people also query this report every hourly. So, <clears throat> in that case, you would not know what was the data output, and also mostly the full time data is. We will also discuss the delta in full file, but just for now, for your understanding, that REST reports are mostly built for the full file, but you can also build the delta files using the reports. That means uh, in the next change, the next run, only the changes or the delta set which has been changed from that time until now should only be synced and not the entire population. So we'll learn that in the delta and change file 